The Minnesota Supreme Court is granting an 11th hour review of a ballot question on the future of policing in Minneapolis. For now, the proposal for the charter amendment change won't count when early voting starts Friday. A judge blocked Minneapolis from counting votes on the question, so the political group behind the ballot measure is telling supporters to wait to vote until the Supreme Court weighs in. Well, the death toll in Minneapolis just continues to rise. There have been seven homicides in just the last seven days, and that puts the city on pace for its most violent year in decades. And police say in addition to the number of shootings going up, so are the number of gunshots fired at each scene. Mary McGuire joins us now live in Minneapolis with more on this uptick in violence. Mary. Well, one week ago today, I was standing in this very spot reporting on the death of a 12 year old boy who was shot and killed in broad daylight. And since then, six more people have lost their lives to violence in Minneapolis. But police tell me it's not just the number of shootings that's worrying them. It was a tragedy that's become all too common near downtown on Wednesday afternoon. Crime scene tape, evidence markers, and investigators covered the 1800 block of 3rd Avenue South in Minneapolis after a man was found shot to death. Um, we have 97 murders in 95. That was a bad year. I'm sure we had similar feelings um, during that period of time. The latest shooting marks the city's 69th murder so far this year. At least three of those victims have been children. We can't have 12 year old uh, uh, babies uh, getting killed. This, this, this is uh, uh, uncalled for. Over the last decade, Minneapolis has averaged 45 murders per year. But it's not just the number of shootings that police are worried about now. It's the number of bullets being fired at each deadly scene. The level of gunfire and the number of shots at each scene, whether it's uh, quote unquote automatic or just multiple people shooting, um, that is on the increase and that is concern. Well, living in Northside, there's always like some shootings, but it sounds like a Call of Duty game or something. North Minneapolis residents have noticed a difference too. I really do love living over here. It's just that, um, you know, this is very worrisome and we need help, so. An increase in the use of auto sears could be part of the problem. The St. Paul Division of the ATF says they started seeing the use of the illegal device, which turns a semi-automatic into a fully automatic weapon last winter. The number of cases they're investigating has spiked over this spring and summer. Now, some high profile cases like uh, the murders of those three children that I mentioned, those are still unsolved. And I asked Minneapolis police today, what is it going to take to solve those cases and bring some closure for those families? They said that they say it um, after almost every crime, call cop crime stoppers with tips that they have. They need tips from witnesses. They say that that will be the key in unlocking some of those cases. Reporting live in Minneapolis, Mary McGuire, Fox 9.